Welcome to session three in conducting a knowledge management audit. In session three, we're going to talk about identifying a context for conducting the audit, and in particular, identifying and profiling some of the sources of intellectual capital that we might want to audit. So we're going to talk about the context for selecting them and then how to go about identifying them. So in this session, we're going to address the context for auditing in terms of what we call key business capabilities. We're going to identify the assets, the intellectual capital assets or the knowledge assets for some of those key capabilities. We'll also take a look at what the uh, liabilities might be for some of those assets. We'll look at challenges that we might encounter in assigning a value to those assets and then we'll come back and talk about what that whole balance sheet might look like in terms of the, the assets, the liabilities, and the net value of intellectual capital for a particular capability. So let's begin by discussing business capabilities, because this is really our context. Capabilities are what an organization does to deliver value to its stakeholders. I know that some of you have been introduced to the concept of the capability in other courses. So this will be a review for those of you. Generally, we have three types of capabilities, strategic, operational, and enabling. We can model any kind of an organization in terms of its capabilities, and in particular, we can organize all those capabilities into these three groupings. We generally do that in what we call a business on a page. So taking a capability approach essentially allows you to focus and to make sure you're focusing on the business and the business goals, which is the context we always want to adopt when we're doing knowledge management. So how do we go about um, creating a business on a page, and what does this look like? Well, this is an example of a business on a page for a university. We call it a university on a page with the strategic, operational, and enabling capabilities in this view. At the very top, learning, innovation, and governance, those are would be the university's strategic goals and strategic capabilities. Those are the capabilities that we're always designing to when we're designing our business. In terms of operational capabilities, there's capabilities that define what we are as an organization and what we do, what value we add. We would have, we would suggest, at least for Kent State, that this involves teaching and learning, research and development, advising, advocacy, and convening. Within each of these operational capabilities, you see that we have broken them down into um, several sub capabilities. For example, under teaching, we would expect to provide top-level instruction for undergraduate students. We would expect to provide superior education for graduate level students. We would encourage the pursuit of lifelong continuing education, support and offer diversity of workshops, maintain accreditation and key academic programs, and so on. So each of these high-level operational capabilities can be broken down into capabilities that actually um, have resources assigned to them, including intellectual capital. At the bottom of the page, you can see some enabling capabilities. Enabling capabilities are pretty standard across most organizations. And we would uh, essentially see marketing, build and enhance the Kent State brand. Uh, we would see uh, uh, fi uh, financial aid services, so this might not be for all organizations, but attract and retain a talented workforce, this essentially translates to HR. We might have um, a, a capability for fulfilling financial and legal obligations, or managing technology, or managing facilities, property, and other assets, or managing the risk, or managing employee and staff pension funds, um, safety and security under well-being of the campus community, et cetera. So we have some standard capabilities that we uh, support to just manage 
make sure that the, the institution can function each day. But then we have our core operational capabilities. One of the points I would like to stress is that if you're going to conduct a knowledge audit, you probably want to look at an operational capability just because that's where the greatest value is to the organization. So if you're going to want if you're going to try to make sure that you have the assets you need and that they're being used appropriately, you want to put your effort into the into the place, the area that has the greatest value or the greatest cost of the organization. If you have a particular cost or a pain point or a problem with an enabling capability, that might be a, um, a target for an audit as well. But primarily you want to make sure that the operational capabilities of your organization are functioning at their maximum capacity. Okay, so that was a business on a page or a university on a page. So let's assume that we're working in that university on a page context. Which of these capabilities would you say were business critical? Well, I would say that there are two to our university. One is to um, ensure that we have the high quality undergraduate uh, education experience. And the second would be to provide a superior education experience for graduate level students. So let's take the undergraduate experience, um, education experience, and walk through the process of an audit for that capability. So what would it look like if we broke this down into subcomponents and then looked for uh, knowledge management assets, or I'm sorry, knowledge assets or intellectual capital assets that supported that capability? All right. So in this, this is essentially what a capability model looks like. Okay? So we have the, the hexagons are essentially the capabilities. The squares that are linked to those, the colored squares, are essentially assets. Now, there are different ways to define assets. Some organizations have defined these in terms of types of content, or uh, uh, you could uh, identify, you could identify the types of financial resources, technical resources, et cetera, that were used to support the capability. What we're interested in is identifying all the intellectual capital assets that support that capability. Okay. So as I mentioned, those high level capabilities that we looked at in the university on the page have a value to the organization. Where the organization can estimate the value of that capability, in other words, the, the value it contributes to the organization, we have a context for understanding and assigning value to the assets that support that capability. This is a very important point because remember in our earlier discussion of intellectual capital, we're always looking for the effect that it has. We can't necessarily in conducting an audit, we don't want to measure the value of the assets directly. We want to measure the value that they provide to the organization in, in the business context. So taking the capability as the starting point and then understanding in, in particular a high value operational capability, we have some sense of what the value of that is to the organization. We can then uh, look to infer the value of the intellectual capital assets um, to that capability. So let's take um, a sample capability and consider how knowledge and intellectual capital assets contribute to the success. Remember the, how they influence that capability. So we're going to assume that our audit um, will focus on one of those business capabilities. Now, thinking back to what is it that we're auditing in terms of intellectual capital, we're looking at um, the assets that Andreessen discussed in his model. So what we care about in this context is whether the assets, whether the assets we need to support that capability are, are available or do we have gaps 
whether the assets we say we're using are there and whether or not they're being used um, as we uh, state that they're being used. So each capability should have its own balance sheet. So this also means um, that in looking at the capability, we're not only looking at the assets that are assigned to support it, and how those assets are being managed and whether or not they're, um, being, they're being used productively or they're uh, creating a liability. Okay, so in session two, we discussed the options for selecting or targeting an audit. So I'd like you to think about your organization. Just take some time to think about your organization as a business on a page. Your first um, view of this doesn't have to be perfect, but just think of it in those terms. And because this will be the context for selecting the capability to, to audit. So think about how it might look if it was modeled as a business on a page, then decide which capability you may want to audit. And just explain or share with us why you selected that capability. 